All right. Ian, we were at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Was it time for a little magic? We had a panel. It, a lot of magic because Ian's analog pocket was announced. That's right. And he's happy, so Ian's going to talk about it here. Woo. Exciting times the past, uh, the past week. Of course, just like a year ago, we discussed a new announcement by Analog literally at Portland last year for the Super NT. Yeah, for the Mega SG. Was it Mega SG a year ago? Mega SG was a year ago. Two years ago was Super NT. Correct. So once a year, they're coming on board. Ian, it's the, they just announced the Analog Pocket. So at the end of the, yeah. So at the end of, I don't know if they can hear you. I hope they can. I hope they can hear the enthusiasm. <laughs> um, so at the end of the last podcast, we mentioned that um, they were going to be making an announcement um, about a system on Wednesday, and we were hoping that we would uh, be talking about it this weekend. And I went off, like I, my, my brain started spiraling out of control, and I started thinking about all the things it could be. And I was like, boy, howdy, it would be great if it was a portable system that could do Neo Geo Pocket Color and Game Gear and all those things. And I woke up the next morning and had to go to the bathroom. Is, you, um, is your brain dialect really say bo boy, howdy to yourself? I say boy, howdy to myself and you other people a, all the time. You have an old-timey personality, I guess, yeah. internal narration going on. Yeah, it's not okay upstairs. Um, <laughs> so... So yeah, they announced it, and it it's so it will it, it it's going to be called the Analog Pocket. It's going to be 199. It comes out sometime next year. Um, it's going to do Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance out of the box, and with adapters, it will do Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket Color, and Lynx. Uh, and more, it says. There's and no more. mention of Wonder Swan, but I'm wondering if that's because they're trying to keep the marketing on brand to stuff that was released in the United States. Systems people actually played here, yes. Because, yeah, yeah, the Wonder Swan never came out here. Um, so with the, uh, they've added a second FPGA board, which will allow um, third-party development. So hobbyists, whoever wants to, can develop new cores. And then, ostensibly, if there was an adapter made for it, I would think it would probably be able to do Wonder Swan. Fine, I would hope. From the magic mind of Kevtris. So having all these cores, we think. We prob it probably is. So this is a description. Uh, a multi-video game system, portable handheld, a digital audio workstation yeah, with a, a built-in synthesizer and sequencer, a tribute to portable gaming. Look at that. Look at that, Ian. Completely engineered in two FPGAs. It's beautiful. And there's a black version and a white version. Yes. Um, so just like every system they've done so far, well, they did it with the... Um, the Genesis, and they did it with the. Did they do it with the uh, Super Analog? Was what was there a packing on that? Uh, for, well, the NT had the. Uh, which one had the had the uh, the running gun shooter? Was that the Genesis one? Yes. Anyways, so that was the Genesis one. I'm, I'm trying okay. to remember if there was one on the Super Nintendo. I don't. I don't remember. Oh, Turrican right. Two yes. was Super. Okay, I, I, that's right. It was. What, is, what did the, What did the Mega SG have with it? Hardcore. That's right. Okay. So. They're including something uh, on this one that I think is very unique and very fitting of the system that they're making. So uh, what they're including with the um, Analog Pocket is a program called NanoLoop. Uh, NanoLoop's been around for a long time. Uh, it's up there with LSDJ as one of the two, I would say, main programs people use for composing chiptunes on the Game Boy. Um, I think the Game Boy at this point is is a lot of people, or at least I do, associate it with music production, um, all of the neat mods that have come out recently in the past you know, decade for Game Boys, the backlights, the new shells, the fancy silicon buttons, it's all kind of been based around um, the people who use these systems for chip tuning. So it's very interesting to see them make that nod and include this Can on there. So and instead of a game, you're getting music production software. Can you explain real quick, like, how would you use yep. that in a setup? So uh, NanoLoop is uh, it's a sequencer and a synthesizer. So basically, you can go in, and you can mess with the waveforms, and then you can place them out like you would on a drum machine. Um, the pictures that they show of it actually kind of do a really good job of explaining how it works. And step by step, it will play the notes that you've placed into um, Basically, it's like a piano roll. It's like a time. It's like a timeline you're looking at. So, I, I, anyways, I think it's very. They very much understand their market with this. Um, I, 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 when we talked about it on the podcast, I did mention I was like, I, it would be really neat if it was pro sound and all that. And it looks like it's going to have 
nice audio output, and it's going to cater towards that sort of market. So, yeah, I'm very which excited about that. Which has helped that. Game Boy Alive the past, like, what, say 10, 15 years about... You yes, know, it's not just seen. gaming, it's, it's used yeah. as an instrument and they're making a, a very obvious nod. Because the audio direction. chip in the Game Boy is more powerful than the NES one, it's more advanced, you can do a little bit more with it. Yes. Yeah, but it still has that old-timey 8-bit you know, feel to it. Right, I think it's probably what people would think of most when they think of chip tunes. Yeah, it's a little more complex, you can do a little bit more with that. So, so. they've also said that uh, next year they're going to be putting a dock out for it. Um, I'm going to guess the dock is going to be 100, but I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to base that on the fact that Nintendo gets 80 for their docks for, for the an Switch. HDMI out dock. And it's, it's, yeah. So I have a feeling they'll be able to get a $100 price tag on that, which makes it three. Um, so we don't know. The, then there's no direct HDMI out that we know of then with no, this. there isn't. Um, That's a shame. With the dock and the additional FPGA board that can be worked on, yeah, that's, that's a big one to me. Um, and the size of it, uh, then you start to think about it and it gets exciting because it's like Literally. having a flash cart that you don't need a system for. It's small, it's portable, yeah. you can put a core for something else on there, and um, you know, depending on how they do the adapters, or obviously it's going to be jailbroken and people are going to be using ROMs, uh, you can travel this thing around and use it to play just about anything, I think. So like famously, the, the opportunities are really very... There, there's. There's almost no limit to what you can do with it. Limit. So famously, starting with the Mini NT, or yeah, the Mini NT, like they were quote unquote jailbroken uh, almost officially, unofficially, to let other cores be ported onto it, 8 bit cores. So with this, I mean, Kevtris has like what, 10, 12 cores he's done? Going back to like, you know, like, you know, like the Intellivision and, you know, things like that, and Atari. Right. So that's what he was talking about. Like, Bring those cores that exist if they're not as com they're not more complex, and then you put them on this. Now you have a portable device for multiple systems potentially. Right. Once it's, that thing can read ROMs, I mean, you can be taking uh, you know the PC Engine library around with you. You could take the oh Turbo Express. Turbo Express. So, oh God. Oh well, there. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, hearts a flutter. <laughs> Don't get your sick. Maybe it's the me. holes drops. You're smelling medicated. No. Uh, um, Did I get drugged by this random person? So, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't love the look of it. I, it, it what don't you like about it? I, I just, I prefer the wider hold as opposed to the, um, as opposed to the more narrow design. I think the buttons look a little close together. The, I really don't the like, action buttons. I really don't like these corner, bottom right menu buttons. That's really bad. If you're holding it, I think you can hit it by accident. They should, I'm not, I don't to listen to me, they should recess those buttons. So right. Like a reset button on a computer where you like to really dig your finger and to hit it. I think people might hit those buttons by accident. So as much as this um, system is kind of like everything I want out of a, a portable, um, I, I, I don't love the look of it, but really I, it's not going to matter once it's doing what it's supposed to do, are which there, is playing the games. Are there triggers on, for Game Boy yeah, Advance? Are. Of course there are. There's no, where's a the picture with them? They show them. It's where the cartridge goes in. Oh, that is? Is that an HDMI out on there? No, that's a link cable. Oh. It's a link port. There's your triggers. Oh, I didn't see them. Oh, so they're like kind of at the, the bottom where the car, Game Boy car would be. So it's not all the way up. It's like in the middle. That's, that's okay. That works. Yeah, that's fine. So kind of like SSP-ish, ish in a way. Yes. Cool. Uh, no, okay. I'm on board. I'm, I'm, I'm down. If this getting, if, they, if we get a Turbo Graphics FPGA core, they throw this on this and have Turbo Express basically in a better way, because this is going to be a much cleaner LCD screen. Is it three and a half inches? Where is it? 3.5 615 PPI LCD with the 1600 times 1440 resolution. So that'll get you all the, all the systems up to like modern day you could have on there with that resolution in a small size. That's like, that's like overkill for an LCD that size. Yeah, that's great. 10 times the resolution of an original Game Boy. Yeah, we can hardly believe it either. <laughs> Pro level color accuracy, dynamic range, and brightness. That's everything, yeah. The brightness can be like through the roof with the modern LCD on here. It's great. So the question is, what, what, what are we going to be talking about next year? I mean, how, how many more places can they go? Turbo and PC Engine? That would be naturally next. Yeah, Turbo and PC Engine. Um, sure, you're not wrong. Well, <laughs> that is something they could do. <laughs> but, if, but if it was too complex for developers back then, to do an FPGA, sure. that will probably take years and years, you know? So, I mean, ideally, I, I think the one that would be, that people would want next would be an N64, but I don't think, I don't think we'll get that next year. 
No, I think you'll stay with the 8-bit stuff first, like Turbo, and get that out of the way. Get that whole generation out of the way, then move forward. Um, I'm not sure. What are, the, uh, what are the adapters on the Mega SG cost? Like $10 each for a Sega Master System? Is that what they cost? Uh, it comes with it. It came with it? Yeah. Did it come with the card one as well, or is that separate? To that's get... separate, and I don't think that's been released yet, which okay. is something that is probably worth bringing up. As neat as these adapters oh, the, are, the we, card have to, one? we have to see them first. Gotcha. Without them, and, and you're with, not doing anything. And with this, you need them to make one, two, just two, or oh, three. Game Gear, Pocket Color, and Lynx adapters we need. Right? Correct. Because the other three can do on its own. Okay, that's, to me, a little problematic just because... Everyone's going to want all of them just in case. I mean, to me, I love the Lynx, and that thing is gigantic. It's nice to have a little small Lynx I can play Gauntlet and California Games on or APB. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm in for a Lynx one for sure. Um, I don't have many NG, Neo Geo Pocket Colors, NG PC games in, uh, to use that with. But uh, I think, what are they, $10 each, the adapters? I think that's reasonable. Um, I wish it would come with one of your choice, maybe, if they get them all done ahead of time. That'd be cool. You know, yeah, I think we'll be one. waiting to see them. You think so? Yeah. Well, that's but, a big seller to me, is getting the extra systems. I mean, that's great. It's six and one. They said plus more, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, this is exciting. Uh, now you can preserve video game history, too. Yeah, 100 years from now, there might just be FPGA systems that still exist that you can play. You know, maybe the hardware and circuitry breaks down on a regular Game Boy. Let's, you know, you keep it like in a 60-degree non-humidity room, and it'll still work. Like, who knows? But uh, that's what they're thinking about, too, which is great. So, um, yeah. I think if, if they do one a year uh, over the next 10 years and, and get all these systems going, and who knows how far the technology jumps, or, hey, maybe you do a, a PS1 FPGA at some point. You know, like, that would be interesting. Sure. We get to that point. But there's a big jump up between 16-bit and then the leap forward to, like, 32 and 64. It's, like, in terms of the complexity to program the FPGA, as far as I know, I'm not an expert, it, it, it's, like exponentially harder. So Does anyone want to see Pat's mouse? That's when dropping on my hardwood floor. It's for real bad. Year. Th thanks, for, thanks for mouse. No problem. I'm just upset that this no. hasn't been fixed. Thanks for mouse shaming me. You <laughs> You're can't, welcome. How am I going to fix it? Glue the pieces back <laughs> Buy on? Buy a new one. That, that obviously cost $3 10 years ago. Swap me. Dollar. You see what i got to put up with? I'm like dying here already. But all right. So is this going to be open pre-orders or limited? I think it's limited, right? Limited. On here. I already signed up for the uh, alert. What's the cost? One ninety nine ninety nine. One ninety nine, and then I'm gonna guess one hundred for the dock next year. That's a little. We gotta bring that price down on the dock. You gotta try uh, on that because a lot of people would love to play all these games on. Let's put it this way: if you can somehow get a turbo uh, graphics FPG on here and then use this on a TV. That would eliminate the need almost for another, you know, a separate console. Basically. That's what I was talking about yeah. earlier. That's yeah. I brought <laughs> no, but, but but yeah. I mean, yes, that's guess, exactly it. But I guess you got to attach a second controller somehow through the console. Uh, you can. You, it, it already said the dock will let you do two uh, wired or Where's two. Where's the dock on this page? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. It'll let you do two wired oh, there it is. or the two um, wireless controllers. Oh, the eight bit two controllers are nice. The Bluetooth ones. It's like they thought of everything. They thought of everything. That's not gonna be a hundred dollars, Ian. It can't be hundred bucks for that. Watch it. Watch wow. it be a hundred. All right, Surly Ian. Okay. All right. Well, I guess moving on. And we're back. Oh, yep. Here I we are. Ian, you were so excited. I was. I was very excited. Uh, I said a lot of. Uh, I said a lot of good things. I think. Uh, you said a lot of good things. Uh, I think you probably said a lot of good things too. From you, what you, I remember. You can barely hear my voice then. From what I remember. Uh, yep. But there we go. 